What's up, happy people, and welcome back to Tip Lady Catch and Release. So today is Sunday, and that means it is the verse of the week. So our verse comes from John 21, 3 through 7. And this is a great verse, and here's what it says. It says, I'm going out to fish, Simon Peter told them. And they said, we'll go with you. So they went out and got into the boat. But that night they caught nothing. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. He called out to them, Friends, haven't you caught any fish? No, they answered. He said, Throw your net on the right side of the boat, and you will find some. When they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. Now, I'm going to save verse 7 for a little later. So y'all just watch through the video and you'll see what I do. But wow, that verse is so powerful. And the disciples are in between what God did and what they're about to do next. It's a hard place to be in, but it's a place where a lot of us are. But I want y'all to know that these in-between places are the places where God reveals more about himself to us. And I believe that God has revealed a great word for y'all. So here we go. So Peter was a real person, and the way he acted was a lot like us. I mean, he had practical matters he needed to attend to. He was hungry. People make it seem so bad that he tried to go find food the only way he knew how to find it. Peter's just going fishing because he doesn't know what God has next for him. But God has shown me that there's something deeper happening here than Peter just keeping himself busy while he waits for what's next. Because even though Peter has seen that Jesus is risen, he hasn't yet received personal restoration. Even though he knows why Jesus died for all my sins. Even though he knows what Jesus did, he rose from the grave. But the question isn't what Jesus did, it's what do I do? It's what do you do? Some, some of y'all believe in what he did, but you came this morning wanting to know, what do I do? I've tried it the world's ways, and that ain't the way. But what is God's way? Because what he did is awesome. But I've done some things. No, 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 no. I'm just not talking about big things. One well, never killed nobody. Neither did Peter. Come on. Just like Peter, today you need a deep encounter with Jesus. And just like him, I believe you're about to have one. Today, Jesus is going to do for you what he did for Peter back then. And for some of you, this is going to be a reset someday. Shout, I'm ready. Say, I'm ready for the reset. Because I don't want to stay where I was. I don't want to do what I've been doing. Because if he's not in the grave, why is this shame on me? If he's not in the grave, why won't this depression leave me? If he's not in the grave, why does this anxiety still attack me? If he's not in the grave, why am I looking among the dead for? Do you want this? Because when the reset comes, it means there's going to be a brand new you to look at in the mirror on Monday morning. I want a Sunday resurrection so on Monday morning I can get up and look at myself and I can say, hello, let's go. God has great plans for you today. This is Reset Sunday. When Peter said, I'm going fishing, I don't hear it like I quit. So it makes me wonder, was he fishing because he lost his faith? Or was he fishing so that he could find it again? Because he remembered three years ago when he let Jesus into his boat. Because it was three years earlier when Peter went fishing. Three years earlier, he cast his nets all night long and didn't catch anything. It was three years earlier as he was fishing, this wonder-working rebel priest named Jesus came up to him and said, Can I use your boat to fish? but I'm fishing for people. It was three years earlier when Peter dropped his nets and went to follow Jesus. It was then when Jesus said, I'm going to show you what you're looking for. Throw your nets down. And when Peter pulled them back up, he wasn't happy. He was scared. He was like, oh no, this is bad. Because if Jesus knows that those fish were in that water, he knows the sin that's in me. So he fell down at Jesus' feet and he said, get away from me. I'm a sinful man. 
But Jesus said no. He said, I'm not going anywhere but inside of you to show you what I put in you. I'm going to make you a fisher of men. Somebody needs to hear that today. He's going to make you a fisher of men. Maybe Peter wasn't giving up. Maybe he said, I'm going back. Come on, somebody. Find your faith today and focus it on Jesus. Because you will find what you fish for. So why when people wake up, the first thing they do is get on their phone and start fishing for a reason to be mad. That's how people like to start off their day. But God wants us to put Him first. God wants us to fish for Him. Because when I put Him first, when I read the Bible, and when I get into His Word, no matter what the devil throws my way, God's Word is sharper than any two-edged sword, and it will find the devil's lies. Come on, somebody, you will find what you fish for. I'm saying that if you're looking for a way to be down today, you'll find ten, and the devil will light them up and make it look ten times worse. But if you're looking for a way to praise God, if you're looking for a way to give him glory. If you're looking for a way to give him thanks, all you gotta do is this. Because let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Come on somebody, praise the Lord today. Start fishing for a way to praise him today. Today he's looking for some praisers. He's looking for some worshipers. And I can do it anytime I want, because I know that deep down inside me is where he is. You say, no, he's up there. Well, I think you missed the point of last Sunday. He died so he could get up to send the spirit back down. Because greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. So all I gotta do is fish for him. Come on, somebody. Start fishing for him today. Because when you're fishing, you're gonna eventually catch something. But can I ask you, what have you caught today? I'll tell you what I've caught. It's something that I can't contain. Because I've caught goodness, I've caught mercy, I've caught healing, I've caught joy, I've caught blessings of good measure. My nets are heavy and running over. My heart is full, my life is saved. I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. He has done it for me, and today He will do it for you. You just gotta fish for it. That day out on the water, I don't think Peter was the only one fishing. And I know that because of what he did when he realized that it was Jesus. I mean, nobody does this kind of stuff when they're in their right mind. Nobody does this kind of stuff when they're in control of themselves. But you just can't fight it. Okay, so can I show you verse 7 now? Watch what Peter did. The Bible says, Then the disciple Jesus loved said to Peter, It's the Lord. When Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on his tunic, for he had stripped it to work. Then he jumped into the water and headed to shore. Question, did Peter really jump or was something pulling him in? Question, was Peter really the only one fishing? No. So who else was fishing? When Peter looked up on that shore, he saw somebody. He should have recognized who it was whose voice that was. It's the same voice that said, Lazarus, and a dead man got up. So he should have known that when that voice speaks, you can't stay where you are, because all of a sudden, something happened to Peter. He was no longer fishing for what he did wrong. He was no longer fishing for what might go wrong. All of a sudden, when he heard Jesus, something started reeling him in. I think Jesus is the real fisherman in John chapter 21. Because while Peter was doing this with his nets, while he was casting his nets, Jesus was over here doing this. Because he knows how to reel you in. Wait, there's no reel in the story. No, you're just spelling it wrong. You're spelling it with two E's. But I'm spelling it R E A. L. God is reeling in the real me. 
the new me. The one that not only knows that he got up, but I feel the spirit of God pulling on somebody right now. God is fishing for you. He's the reason why you came here. He's the one who drew you here. He wants to give you a reset so you can not only fish on the right side of the boat, but that you can live on the right side of the empty tomb. So that you can live forgiven. So that you can live free. So that you can live knowing that there is a God who knows all that is in you. The good and the bad. The gifts and the weaknesses. The trauma and the testimony. He knows it all, but he still chooses you. And today, he is calling your name. Come on, somebody. Peter was hungry for food, so he went fishing. But Jesus wants us to be hungry for him and go fishing for him today. Jesus said in Matthew 5.3, Blessed are those who are spiritually needy. The kingdom belongs to them. Then he goes on to say in verse 6, Blessed are those who are hungry and thirsty for what is right. They will be filled. He knows that you're needy. He knows you're in the in-between. But he wants you to be, he wants you to be hungry for him today. He wants to give you a reset today. And this is your moment. He's been reeling you in. The Spirit of God has been drawing you in. And how much more will he have to do for you to come? Remember last week on Calvary? He died for you. He took every sin you could ever commit and paid the price for it all. But this moment is about you coming. He's been looking for you. He's been reeling you in. God brought you here today. I didn't. God had you watch this. I didn't. He's fishing for you today. And he will leave the 99 to find the one every time. Are you the one? And I just feel the Spirit of God told me to do this. I didn't plan on it, but the Bible says, as long as it is day, we must do the works of the one who sent us. Night is coming, then no one can work. So, I'm gonna pray. And if you really wanna go fishing for him today, if you're at that point of decision, the decision to follow Christ and give your life to him and receive his life so you can be forgiven of your sin and to have a brand new life today, right now I'm gonna pray. And if this is you, I want you to repeat this out loud. Right now, right where you are, if you're ready to come back to God. Pray it out loud, but it has to be from your heart. If you're just saying words because it's fun, it won't do anything. But if it's from your heart, it'll change your eternity. Repeat after me. God, I come to you in Jesus' name. I need a savior. I need forgiveness. I believe in my heart that Jesus is the Son of God. I believe he died on a cross for me. And I believe that he rose from the dead. So today, because of what I believe, I confess him as Lord of my life. I give my life to him. Lord, teach me, show me, and I'll follow you. And I do this in the name of Jesus, amen. And for those of you that prayed that and truly meant that, come on and celebrate, because your eternity just changed. Because of the goodness of God, you just made the greatest decision of your life. Because Jesus' blood was enough to pay the price for your sin so that we might become the righteousness of God. Lift up your hands and worship Him today. Lift up your voice, lift up your heart, and fish for Him today. So, thank you for watching Tip Way to Catch and Release. Make sure to tune in next Sunday for another verse of the week. Take care, God bless, and we are gone.